So here we are again, I've made a bit more progress. I've got the, um, the Z stage, that's the bed and the lead screws and everything else fitted. And the X-axis gantry fitted and I've uh, leveled and trammed the bed. More importantly, trammed. Something a lot of people don't do and I'll probably have a little bit of a rant about this because it's one of my um, one of my pet things. Anyway, um, so yeah, all the parts are um, salvaged from the other printer. So um, here are some pictures of the uh, the lead screw mounts and the lead screws and the um, drive and so forth. As you can see, I use uh, three lead screws because three points define a plane, um, and a single con and a continuous belt and a, and a single motor to drive the uh, the bed up and down. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail of this. It's basically all carried over from my other printer, um, but the uh, the bed itself is um, 10 mil thick aluminium plate milled aluminium plate so it's it's cast tooling plate that's milled and machined and perfectly flat so it's bolted to a frame which is 2020 aluminium and that's what the uh, the lead screws connect to they connect to the frame um, there are small pillars between the build plate uh, the actual aluminium heated plate and the frame itself so very little heat gets um, conducted into the frame itself so I don't get the thermal expansion on the frame, don't have to worry about kinematic mounts. And there's um, 6 mil of insulation, the type that's used for underfloor heating, it's called semi-rigid. That goes between the frame and the build plate. A couple of quick pictures just to show how the lead screws attach to the bed frame and how the uh, linear guides attach as well. So I actually use rod end bearings. Um, to fix it to the frame so they give a, a, a bit of movement for um, for leveling the bed. So the screws do the lifting, the guides do the guiding and never, this, never the twain shall meet as they say. Now I don't want debris um, dropping down into the belt onto the Z belt or anything like that but more importantly because the electronics will be in a drawer underneath um, this lot then um, I don't want debris dropping down into <laughs> into the electronics either so I've made a plate I've got a, some 2 mil aluminium cut to the overall dimension 620 by 640 and then I've cut the corners out to clear the bed frames and um, made some holes in it to clear the um, linear guides and the lead screws so they're plenty plenty big those holes plenty of clearance around them and then I before I took the printer apart I printed those um, spaces that cover up most of the of the hole covers up the gap in between so that's just going to be it's green at the moment because that's just a protective film that's on it um, i'll leave that on until last minute so that wonderful um z stage would all be um covered and never see the light of day again probably then i've also installed the um the x rail um, which goes onto the y gantry so there's a couple of pictures of that That's all clamped up and squared. And then finally I have leveled the bed and got it tram, which is important uh, to me. So I don't use any form of um, flatness or leveling or anything in, in firmware. Being a mechanical engineer, I'm, I'm old fashioned in that respect. So initial leveling of the bed is basically done by uh, slackening the pulleys on the lead screws and rotating each lead screw. But now this is important, I think it's important anyway, in that you can have a bed that is level, but on a core XY, the X and Y gantries also need to be tram, or parallel if you like, with the plane of the bed. So what a lot of people do is they'll, they'll level the bed at the three points where the three screws go 
uh, and sure it's nice and level and so what you've then got basically you've got a, a plane those three points on the bed describe a plane where the three lead screws attach and that plane is then level with respect to the bottom three points where the lead screws attach so you've got where the lead screws attach those three points form a plane and then when you level it by adjusting the lead screws on the, for the bed itself that forms a plane and those two planes if it's level will be parallel with each other but we move the gantry in X and Y on rails that are at the top of the frame so if that isn't also that plane described those X Y rails if that's in any way twisted or it's not completely parallel with the bed then you've got a problem it's not tram so what a lot of people seem to do is they buy expensive milled aluminium plate for their bed and they level it by adjusting the three points where the lead screws are and then they will probe the bed and measure like assuming the, assuming you got a lead screw front left front right uh, and back middle then they will probe the bed all over having got it leveled at those three points and they find that say the bottom left corner is low and maybe the bottom or the back right is high so they assume then that the bed is twisted the, the actual aluminium plate they bought is twisted so then they <clears throat> put in um, mesh bed leveling and use all this sort of stuff but that's not the reason why if the frame itself is low at say the rear left corner and high at the rear right that's the reason why it looks like the the, the bed will be twisted because it because the, the xy gantry isn't tram with the plane of the bed this is something i often rant about and i'm not very good at describing it so i, I still don't know if i've described it properly anyway so to do all this leveling and traveling um, i use a dull type indicator dial gauge um, so I basically made an adapter that fits on the carriage where the hot end would normally go so the actual tip of the dial gauge is pretty much in the exact position that the nozzle will be when the hot end itself is installed so there's a couple of pictures of that And then what I do is I level the bed, but not at each lead screw. What I do, I draw a line midpoint between the front lead screws and the back lead screws. And the midpoint, of, so that's the midpoint of the plane of the bottom of the lead screws. And then I draw another line parallel with the center of the rear lead screw so then using pick a screw it doesn't matter which one but so I, I use the front left my left front left as the datum so I measure across the center of the bed from front to back that center line I use the front left as a datum and to get it level left to right I adjust the right hand lead screw and then I measure the front of the bed and get it parallel get it level front to back by adjusting the back lead screw so i've now got the bed is level with the plane described by the bottom of the lead screws so i'm, I'm taking the center point of the bed as the datum and going forward and backward from that center point and left to right from that center point by the way that that dial gauge the increments are 0 0.01 mil um, so 10 microns uh, per division so then having established the fact that the the bed is level with or a plane described by the three points of the bed where they attach to the lead screw is level in relation to the three points where it attaches 
where the bottom of the lead screws attach. So we've, we've got the bed level by measuring across the centre in both directions. But now what we need to do is establish that the frame itself is also parallel with that plane that we've just established. So what I have to do is then probe it all four corners and see if there's any difference. And in fact, there was slightly. So when I build, built the machine, I put plates on the bottom of the legs, which take the, um, the feet. And then the lowermost rail sits on top of those plates. And then for the X and Y rails, I had a spacer. I can't remember the exact length, about 750 mil. And I put that on top of the lower rail and then fitted the rail, the, the X, Y rails so they just touched that spacer. It was basically a lump of aluminium extrusion that I used. In fact, I had two and milled them both so exactly the same length, so I put one each end. And then um, when I tightened up the screws on the X, Y rails, made sure that they were touching that spacer so that it was the same distance from the bottom rail and the bottom rail is where the lead screws fit. So in theory, it should be parallel. When I checked the four corners, there was a slight difference. So what I had was a piece of paper. Front left was 0.09 mil low. Front right was 0.11 high. Rear left was 0.11 high. And rear right was 0.1 low. So then what I do, did, was basically slacken the screws that hold the rail onto the frame slightly and give it a tap with a hammer to adjust it basically and then tighten the screws up again. So you do that and then you've got to redo the bed level by adjusting the screws. And then you move on to the next corner, slacken that, tap the frame up and down as it needs to be, then redo your lead screws and do all four. So then you end up with a plate that is level and it's tram. That means it's parallel. All the X, Y rails are absolutely parallel with the bit. Well, as near as you can get it. So I was aiming for um, 0.1 mil, where, you know, over the entire 400 mil square plate there should be no difference more than 0.1. It was my criteria generally my first layer is 0.3 so you can get away with 0.2 to whatever height but better than that if I could so in fact I did so so it, there these are the uh, these pictures show the four the center and the four corners so I actually ended up with um, a maximum difference plus or minus 0 0.03 mil so 30 microns um, so the bed is flat and level anywhere on that 400 mil square within 0 0.03 of a millimeter, which will do me. Um, I could, I might, if I get bored, I might have another little go and see if I can get that even better, but that's probably good enough. So it took me a couple of hours to make the adapter for the dial gauge, and then I spent about an hour. I guess, um, leveling the bed and, and tramming the rails. So kind of three hours in total. But I'll never do that again now with the old machine. It got, a couple of times it got put into the back of a transit van and driven 100 miles up the motorway to the NEC and taken apart and then put back together and all the way back again, or partly disassembled. And it never moved. I never had to readjust any leveling at all. So, so this will never move. No leveling compensation, no three-point leveling, no, no mesh bed compensation. None of that don't need to do it. You just start up print and away it goes, no matter how big it is, how small it is, or where it is on the build plate. I've done, I've put a video up, I've done edge-to-edge -edge prints, 0.3mm layer height, edge-to-edge. -edge. So that's the mechanical engineer's approach to getting a uh, flat level bed. So my little my little rant is that people will blame the they'll, they'll buy expensive milled um, aluminium tooling plate to use as their bed, 
and then because their frame itself isn't tram then they blame the tooling plate and end up doing mesh compensation if you're going to do that don't don't waste your money i mean there's nothing wrong with using mesh compensation if that's what you want to do just don't waste your money on buying an expensive mill tooling plate because you're going to you know if you're going to do that compensation just buy some plain old plate that isn't <laughs> isn't isn't flat if you're going to if you're going to kind of ignore it um, and use mesh compensation anyway save your money or you use the um, you do use expensive milled tooling plate which is flat but you do it properly and then you don't need the mesh compensation i guess that's my little rant um, anyway hope you found this interesting and uh, we should make a bit more progress and come back in, a, in another week or so thanks for watching bye